In Modern Warfare 2, the SBMM feels really strong, the time to kill is rapid. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at 17 Modern Warfare 2 tips you need to follow in order to improve at this game. And just quickly before we jump into these tips, if you are looking to pick up cheap games, you want to get Modern Warfare 2 cheap, there is a link in the description that will take you through the CD keys. They're fast, they're reliable, they're cheap. And by using the link in the description, you will also be directly supporting the channel at the same time. Also, if this video helps you out in any way, you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like on it. All support on the channel is greatly appreciated. And let's get into these tips. So number one is to focus on leveling up your weapons instead of your character. If we go through to the weapons and we have a look, for an example, which goes to the Cinder Hurricane, it's the FSS, but I've got the Vault Edition skin on it or whatever you want to call it. If we take a look at these optics, I have one optic unlocked for this gun and it's level 13. If we scroll through and we have a look as an example here, we've got the XRK on point optic. You need to level up the Bryson 890, which I believe is a shotgun. You need to get that to level 5 to unlock this optic. If we take a look right here, we've got the Corvus downrange 00. You unlock this one by leveling the MX9 to level 8. So make sure you're using a different variety of weapons, you're trying out different guns and stuff, because they will be important to unlocking optics and things like that for your favourite gun. They're going to make your favourite guns even better by levelling up other weapons in the game. Your weapon levels are way more important than your character level. Tip number two, make sure you change your settings. You'll see there are two different motion blurs. There's film grain, you've got your sensitivity, there's also the button layout, I like to switch it over to tactical. There is a full video on the channel for the best settings for console and controller players. Check that video out, but basically change your settings around. I would highly recommend turning off the motion blurs, put your film grain down to zero, turn your depth of field off, it's all going to make the game sharper. You're not going to get a blurry view at long distances and things like that. It's just going to be beneficial to your game, your sensitivity. Start on a low one, slowly work your way up. It's all covered in the other video on the channel, but make sure you change your settings. Don't play with everything default. It's not going to be the best experience. It's actually going to make it harder for you to improve as a player. Tip number three is to set up your kill streaks and your perks properly. I would say, especially for beginner players, use score streaks over kill streaks because they are actually much easier to obtain. If you go into kill confirmed on kill streaks, it's four kills for a UAV. If you go in on a score streak, then it's going to be three kills and a couple of tags in Kill Confirmed or something like that. Pure example, but if you look at the bottom left of the screen, I can use my right trigger on an Xbox controller to change them from kill streaks to score streaks. When it comes to the perk system, you are going to have two base perks, a bonus, then an ultimate. So make sure you're leveling up in the game as well as focusing on your weapons. Level up your character as well. When you get to level 26, as an example, you'll unlock Scavenger. And then over in the ultimate perks, when you reach level 52, you will unlock Ghost. But talking about perks, that does move me on to tip number four. Your character level, as I said, 52 to unlock Ghost, to 26 for Scavenger. They don't matter too much. So it's not about putting all of your focus into your character level. That's why I said stick with guns primarily, character level secondary. Because if we have a look, there are preset packages for these perks. And if you look at the Phantom one, that comes with Cold Blooded and Ghost. So if you want to use Ghost, you don't need to be level 52. There's also one called Assault that's going to give you Scavenger. So if you're lower than level 26, you don't need to worry about it because there is a perk package that will come with Scavenger equipped. Tip number five, alongside perks and kill streaks, there are also field upgrades. You can unlock a second field upgrade when you reach level 45. And if we take a look at these, you get things like munitions boxes, you get portable radars, which are really, really helpful. You've also got tactical insertion on there. And this time around in Modern Warfare 2, Dead Silence is not a perk, it is a field upgrade. So make sure you choose the right one. If you're playing something like Search and Destroy, you might want to use Dead Silence. If you're playing something like Free For All, or you're playing Invasion, some of the bigger game modes where you're going to be using a lot more ammo, I would chuck on something like the munitions box. Also for Invasion, you might want to use the tactical insertion because it's going to stop you having to play a running simulator for five minutes every time you die. Tip number six is to use the firing range to your advantage. If you tab along to weapons and I press Y on the Xbox controller, it is going to load me into the firing range. 
Apologies, you have to hold it, not just press it. So now if I select my Cinder Hurricane, I can practice shooting moving targets and everything with this gun, and I can test my different attachments. It's going to save you basically creating a new loadout, having no idea how bad or good it is. So when you go to your weapons tab on the menu, like your pre-lobby, your main menu, or whatever it is, go to the weapons tab, hold down Y on the Xbox controller, or every triangle on PlayStation, jump into the firing range, test out your guns, test out your different attachments, and you will be good to go. It's especially going to be good, you can see my potato aim, for hitting targets a long range. Test out all your different attachments, make sure that you can know your guns and understand them inside out before you jump into matches and you're dying all over the place, your potato aiming, everything like that. The firing range is going to give you a big benefit to understanding your weapons before you jump into matches. Tip number seven is to use your minimap. You are going to be able to figure out where the enemy spawns are. When there's a UAV up, you're going to get pings from the UAV. Your minimap is going to be really, really important. There is also at the top of your screen a compass. That's going to show you the red dots when enemies are firing. But your minimap, if you can take a look at that just briefly for even a second or two, and you see that where you are on the map, all of your teammates are behind you, you're going to know that the enemies are spawning somewhere in front of you so you can be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and you can play a bit more strategically because this Call of Duty is not just fast-paced run and gun. The spawns are all over the place. Sometimes they are terrible. So paying attention to your minimap, knowing where the enemies are spawning or having a rough idea of where they're spawning, checking out the pings from the UAVs and stuff is definitely going to help you out. Tip number eight is to make sure you get the higher ground when it's possible. As we spoke about in tip number seven, there will be enemy pings on the minimap, but these pings will also have arrows going up or down, and that is going to show you whether the enemy you are looking at on the minimap is going to be higher up or lower down than where you are. Always try and keep your enemies level or below you because the higher ground always wins. Tip number nine is more for players that can't get on with using like analog sticks. You're not too good with your thumbs. I don't personally do this. I've left my settings to default, but I've seen so many people talking about it and apparently it actually feels quite broken. So when you go into your settings, you've got your aim assist type. I've heard that if you put this on Black Ops aim assist and you put the response curve type onto dynamic, it's going to feel quite broken. It's a really, really strong aim assist is going to be more of a struggle to miss the enemy than what is going to be to hit them. It will obviously annoy players when you're using a controller, you've got a really strong aim assist on, and it is kind of a crutch in the game. But the aim assist is ridiculous in Modern Warfare 2, so if you are struggling a little bit with getting yourself kills in games and stuff, then put your aim assist type to Black Ops, put the response curve type on Dynamic, and hopefully that helps you pull off a few more kills in matches. Tip number 10 is when you have a double XP token, whether that's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, make sure you grab your phone or just anything you can grab that's got a timer on it. Set your own timer for your double XP tokens. There is not an in-game timer for these tokens and it does not base itself on in-game time. These are real-time double XP tokens. So if you go and you activate an hour double xp token you play one match then you have to go out or something you're going to miss out on all of that like extra 45 50 minutes so make sure if you're going to activate an hour double xp token make sure you have a real life hour to sit there and play the game and time it so that you know when that double xp token expires tip number 11 is to take your time in modern warfare 2 infinity ward have drastically slowed down the pace and you should as well Playing slower is instantly going to improve your skill. Not only that, but running in the game will lock up your weapon for a split second. So when you're running, you go to aim down your sights. There's going to be this tiny little gap of when you stop running and then you aim down your sights. I think the official name for it is sprint to fire or something like that. But there's this little timer if you're running around where you're not going to be able to just instantly like aim down your sights and ping an enemy. So don't run around every single corner, make sure you're peeking and everything like that. Slow down the pace, not to a snail's pace, but slow it down a little bit because Modern Warfare 2 in 2022 is not about the fast-paced run-and-gun play style that you have seen in previous Call of Duties. Tip number 12, and this one ties in with taking your time and slowing down the pace of your play style. 
you need to learn to peek corners and aim down your sights early. If you are able to do this and you can master it, you're going to have a huge edge over other players that are rushing around. If you're standing there and you're peeking a long line of sight to a door and an enemy runs in, they're going to have that split second from tip number 11 where it locks up, your sprint to fire speed's a little bit slow, and whilst they're running in, they're trying to aim down their sight, you're probably going to kill them because the time to kill is so fast. You're probably going to kill them before they've even looked down their sights. Tip number 13 is after slowing down your playstyle, make sure that you are using the right weapon for the right map. Maps that are more open, maybe something like Crown Raceway, I would say probably try an AR for that. There's a couple of lanes where there's a bit of like a longer range, and then obviously you have stuff in the middle where it's close range. But on the smaller maps, run an SMG or a shotgun. People do obviously just run around with whatever weapons they want, snipers on small maps and things. But the smaller maps, I definitely recommend running an SMG, the FSS Hurricane, the Vel 46. There's a good choice of guns to use, and it's all going to be situational. So I would recommend smaller maps, SMG or shotgun, something that's going to be fast, something that's going to pack a punch at a close range. Then on maps like Crown Raceway, when you're playing Ground War and when you're playing Invasion, the bigger open maps, try an AR, maybe a battle rifle, a sniper even. Try and balance it out and make sure you're using the right weapon for the right map. Tip number 14 is that Modern Warfare 2 is more of a shoot first and get the kill than any other COD title. So make sure you are aiming to the chest or the head to kill your enemies faster. I'm an absolute sucker for this. I walk around corners or I'm sprinting around corners even. And I'm aiming pretty much towards an enemy's feet. If they run into like my line of sight, I'm going to be aiming towards their feet. Always aim for the chest or the head because if you pull off a bullet first, you're more than likely going to get that kill. This Modern Warfare 2 2022 Call of Duty seems to be whoever shoots first gets that kill. The weapons are fairly balanced in their damage output. So aim for the chest, aim for the head, pull off those bullets first, get those kills. Tip number 15. This is more of a beginner tip for someone that's playing something like Domination. Never ever try and capture all three flags. Keep two of the flags so you're playing on a map, you've got A, B, C. Keep A and B because the enemies are then going to start spawning at C. If the spawns flip around for any reason and an enemy gets too close to your flag or a teammate gets too close to theirs and you're going for C and B, don't capture A. Don't go anywhere near that A flag because then the spawns will start to flip. Your goal for domination is to capture two flags. I would say A and B or B and C. I wouldn't try going for A and C or something like that. Keep the two, don't go close to the enemy's flag, keep those spawns where they are, and then you're going to have a much better time. You're going to win the match because you've got two flags over having just one. And not only that, you'll know where the enemies are going to be spawning from. It's going to be easier kills. Tip number 16 is footsteps in Modern Warfare 2 are incredibly loud. Turn your headset up, turn your TV up, whatever you're using to get sound from the game, turn it up so that you can hear the footsteps. The audio is actually really, really good in this game if you use it to your advantage. It is really, really loud. They could have turned it down a little bit. But if you're going to use it, use it to your advantage. Turn it up so that you can hear the footsteps. You can hear the direction of your enemies. And also, if you're wanting to keep your footsteps quiet, make sure you pop on the Dead Silence field upgrade. And just don't sprint around everywhere. If you're crouch walking, there's a perk that will speed that up for you. You're crouch walking around, you're going to be much more quiet is going to let you get the drop on some of your enemies. Then tip number 17, the final one for this video, is to just play the game. If you don't play, you can't improve. If you're sitting there trying to change your loadout for an hour, you're changing your operators and stuff, you're not in a match playing the game, you're not going to be improving. Even with the strong SBMM in this game, even with the fast time to kill, you can still improve as a player if you just get in there, try different game modes, try different weapons, find the best balance for you as a player, for your personal play style. And I really hope that at least one of these 17 Modern Warfare 2 tips have helped you out. That's going to do it for this video. Check out this video if you want to see other Modern Warfare 2 content on the channel. That's going to do it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.